Welcome to the Cash Flow Couple Podcast, where we go behind the scenes in our short term rental business and reveal tips, tricks, secrets, successes, and failures. Whether you have zero units or 100 units, this podcast is for you. I'm your hostess with the mostest, Wendy Williams, along with my husband, John Williams. Together, we operate Queen City Suites, a short-term rental business here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Welcome back to the podcast. Hope everyone has had a wonderful holiday season. And I am so glad that it's over. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Isn't that your favorite time of year, though? Well, I do enjoy Christmas. I do. I love to give presents and um, I like to spend time with family, but I also really like it when the kids go back to school. Oh, okay. Well, I know you like Christmas music because it's on 24 <laughs> 7. That's true. Poor John. <laughs> so I, I get in the car and it's like, dee, 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 dee. <laughs> <laughs> I do love Christmas music. That's true. <laughs> so, But now we're back at it. And today we are going to talk about something very important, which is team members. So we're going to be talking about what team members we use and how we use them. Yeah. And, and one of these might actually surprise you as a, as a team member. Yes, that's true. So this is also out of our book, 88 Secrets to Success for Your Short-Term Rental Business. That's right. This available is... on Amazon <laughs> and wherever books are sold. <laughs> wherever books are sold. <laughs> and this is section five. So let's talk about the first main one first and the most important one possibly. Well, a, a very important one would be the cleaners. Yeah. If you don't get that one right, you're you're kind of screwed. Yes. So... And hopefully you're not the cleaner. No, please, please no. You know, actually, we I started out being the cleaner. Yeah, because it was in the basement. Because it was in the basement. And then the once we started scaling, I actually started cleaning, but I knew that I wasn't going to be the cleaner for the whole time. And the reason that I started cleaning it cleaning the the external units that we have was so that I could come up with a cleaning checklist. Yeah, so you cleaned it the first time. I cleaned it the first time. So I, we set it up and then you cleaned it. Actually we stayed there. That's right. Which is part of our process when we set up, but and then you cleaned. And then I cleaned it and that way I knew exactly what needed to be done. So I could come up with a a really good cleaning checklist for each room in the property. So that's what we did. And the cleaners are, I mean, they're the eyes, the first people on the property after a guest checks out, they're like your eyes on the property. So that's why I think that they are one of the most important people on your team. Yeah. And cleanliness is like one of the most important things that can happen in your unit too. Yeah. P you know, if it's not clean, if it's not clean. And I mean like really clean, right. People will complain. Oh yes. No matter sure. what type of customer you're serving, they want it to be clean. Oh yeah, for sure. And especially we advertise that in our, in our listings, we actually say professionally cleaned, you know, sanitized, all this kind of thing. So if you're going to even say that, right. It sets that expectation as well, but it's it's part of what people expect. It's kind of like a basic thing that people expect to have happen. Yeah, that's a really good point. It doesn't matter what level of service, because we've talked about this before, right? Like you've got the Nordstrom high level of right. service. They've got the Target area of service, and then you've got the Walmart level of service but don't you expect all of their bathrooms to be clean but when you go there yeah regardless i think cleanliness is an expectation for everyone regardless of what level of service i mean yeah you might not leave out the the nice little individual shampoos and conditioners if you're serving a target customer probably 
Right, but that's but, not cleaning. But you know, that's that's an amenity. If you, but everybody expects everything to be clean. Yes, and it's one of those things that you don't hear about unless it's wrong. Yes, you know, nobody really. Right. But it's I shouldn't say no. It, you should say never say never, right? It's expected. But it's it's unusual for someone to say, "Well, that was really clean," right? But right. But they will say, "Hey, there's a hair in the bathroom," <laughs> right? Right, and the or and whatever. That, and that, it, I, let me tell you. Kitchens and bathrooms will, they sell homes, and let me tell you, they sell short-term rentals, yeah, too. Yeah, and, and they will affect your reviews. And they will. Especially uh, hair. Especially hair. Hair is just one of those things that exactly what people I was don't say. want to see somebody else's no, hair. No, I don't. I don't either. You've got a thing about hair, though. I do, but I think most people do when it comes to like I do, I, uh-huh. the shower yeah, or, you know sure. what I mean? For Especially sure. Especially if it's a place you've rented like that. Definitely. Or even a hotel. I mean, you know, you go to a hotel and you find like something like that. You're like, okay, now what else didn't they clean? And that's exactly and that's what, happens. what happens when people come and stay at one of your one of your places. If they find once they find one thing wrong, they're looking for something else. Yeah, and they'll find it. And they will. No find place it. is perfect. Uh uh-uh, uh no. So, but they'll they'll complain about. And they it. will nitpick about every. So cleaners are like yeah. a really important team member Man. because that person has to have that mindset too. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of the cleaners that because we've been through a lot of cleaners. Boy, that's the for sure. It's the truth. And it's it's hard to it's really hard it really to find is. somebody that's good and consistent. Consistence. Like consistent. every time. Because mm-hmm. it has to happen every time. Yep. You know, that, I think a lot of cleaning people are used to residential cleaning and at least the ones we run across and they're used to going to clean someone's home. I've thought about this a lot. Like what what why do they um Maybe there's there's more of a tolerance when somebody comes to your home like that, um, because if, if there's a hair, it's yours. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, and things like that. And plus, I suspect that the cleaners themselves, when they go to somebody's home and they know that person is going to be the person staying there is going to be the person paying them, basically. Oh, yeah. That maybe they look at it a little differently than, oh, well, it's just a rental. Right. Right, and you can't have somebody that thinks that way, right? Because mm-hmm. it's it's actually probably more important. You know, I can tolerate it in my house, but I can't tolerate it in my yeah in my rentals. Yeah, that's a really good point. And an, another thing that we like to look for is because we have so many locations, we really need someone who can has a company. Yeah, it has a team. That, so that they can... They're a team member, but they need to have a team themselves almost. Handle all the... I mean, if we had a checkout everywhere on the same day, I mean, we've got to have somebody who can handle that kind of... Yeah, and one person can't do it. And one person just can't do it. No. So that's a really good point you met, you you came up with is that, hey, you need backups. Yeah, for sure. This team member particularly cleaners you need more than one even if you only have one place yeah for sure because people get sick yep and right. even if it's a company things yep. happen that, mm-hmm. you know that half of their staff is out and they can't get to your yep. place and it's kind of important that they come between 11 and five and four or whatever you know yeah so you you need backups to your backups even if you're using a company yeah and we do we actually have multiple backups for each location yeah and and that too is easier when you have lots of things become easier when the more units you have it sounds weird but it's actually easier because we can say okay these this person's the primary for these two places yep. and this other person's the primary yep. for these other two places and the back and then they're just the, backups mm-hmm. for each other yep and they're just backups where for each if you other. only had like maybe one unit and you had one person that was a primary all the time and somebody that was the backup, you, you don't really know if your backup's coming or right. not. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Right. Because you're not a, you're not business for them. You're not, not a lot of business for them. Right. Mm-hmm. So you got to, I would almost say, hey, alternate. If you got two people, alternate them on, on one reservation just so you have two people that regularly come. Yeah. That's a really good idea just so that they can – have the experience of cleaning it because, you know, once you get into cleaning the property, you get a, you get a system down, you know what things 
to look for. You know what's supposed to go where. Yeah, like what it's supposed to look what like. What it's supposed that's to look important. like. It is important. That's it another needs thing to look that... like the pictures every single time somebody checks in because that's their expectation. Yes, and it's different from residential cleaning in that like you said, everything needs to be in its place. So you'll have guests that'll move things. Mm -hmm. And if the cleaner doesn't know, they don't know to put it back. Or one of my, you know, big ones I think always think about is like lamps get unplugged. Yeah. And you know, you you wouldn't think to think of that because it's not really a cleaning task per se, but somebody needs to look and say, Hey, are all the lamps because people will pl- unplug your lamps to plug in their phones or right. tablets or mm-hmm. whatever. Yep. And so it's little things like that, uh, informing you, you know, or light bulbs out, Yeah. you know, just things that a normal cleaner might not do. And all those things are actually on our checklist. Yes. Yeah, so we do add it to the checklist, yeah. but I, you got to make sure they're following your checklist. Well, too. you know, right? that's a problem too. It is. Because people will come in and they're like, well, I know how to clean. Uh Uh-huh. Right. And it's not just cleaning. Right. I mean, I need some. They're the, just like I said at the beginning, they are the eyes. They are our eyes on the property. And they are the first ones there. Usually. Usually after the guest has checked out. Yeah. But I would caution people because I I see a lot of people that almost use their cleaners like de facto property managers. In other words, the cleaner's the only person that ever goes there. Oh, yeah. So they're having them do a lot of things that aren't cleaning per se. And uh-huh. I, maybe that's okay. But uh, at least in our business, we kind of split out a lot of those tasks away from the cleaner because we want the cleaners cleaning. To just focus on cleaning. You know, we want them to be really good at cleaning. Right. Because right. that's so important. Yeah. And there, and there are other things that are important too, but when you start onloading them other tasks right. like laundry, laundry and, you know, restocking your, right. your stuff yep. and taking your inventory and it, then it becomes more time for them. And then they, I, I need them cleaning. I need yeah. them focused on cleaning. Yeah. And that actually brings up the next team member that we have and we call them the runner. Yes. And so the runner is actually in charge of restocking um, inventory and bringing the dirty linens, taking the dirty linens to the laundry service, picking them up, picking up the cleans and bringing them to the to the property and putting them in the right location where they're supposed to go. Yeah. And that that's one of the tasks we have our runner do. But just in general, you need. There are times you need to go to the property besides checkout, like uh, something needs to be taken over there that's come in, like some inventory mm-hmm. item, or um, the guests uh, can't figure out how to use the Wi-Fi, and somebody has to go over there and reset the modem. Modem, right? That's not a cleaning task. That's a um, it's not even a checkout task. It's just a task. Yep. And that person may be you in your business, but realize you're performing that role. And if you're going to expand, you need a person that, and we call them a runner because they run. To, right. <laughs> they run around and do all our errands for us. Basically, yeah. And then, like you said, we do have them have do regular tasks as well. So they're doing those one-off tasks, but they're also doing, like you said, we use them, we utilize them to for our laundry back and forth. Um, they actually go to every checkout because of that. Yep. And so then now there are a second set of eyes on yep. damage or mm-hmm. what needs to be, you know, moved or, or whatever, or maybe the cleaners miss something and mm-hmm. they can see it. Yep. And so we almost double up a little bit on that responsibility, which I think works well because it's so important. Yep. You know, it's so important that things are, are correct every time. So the, just the fact that we actually have two sets of people that kind of overlap, yep. like the runner's not doing cleaning, or they shouldn't be, and your cleaning person shouldn't be doing your running. Right. But I know there are some people that, that combine those, and I, th- I think it's important to actually split them out. Because for one thing, cleaning is a, is a, it's a, it's a more skilled job than just running around to different properties. It just is. And so the pay rates are different. So I don't want to pay twenty six dollars an hour to a cleaner to be doing something that you could be charging, you know, that's a ten dollar an hour job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. 
And so, I, so yeah, so we have a runner. That's that's our other, t- and they're they're a really important part of our team. Yeah, as well. the runner is really super. And you know what? It was interesting because, just like you said, the runner doesn't necessarily have to have any kind of major skills like cleaning. Right. But what the runner does need to have is character. Oh, yeah. It's ethics. So we hired the runner that we hired. We know that we can trust her. Yeah, we hired based on that. Because she has access to all of our properties. Yeah, for sure. And all of the... um, she pr- she practically knows like everything about our business. Yeah. So we had to hire someone who we could trust first. Yeah, because and they're foremost. really you. <clears throat> exactly. They're your proxy. In a yes. Lot of, in a lot they're kind of ways. like your right hand man. Even like when guests are there. You yeah. Know, if, if we've got to. Yeah. Exactly. I what we had to do here recently for guests, but it was. Um, oh shoot! What was that? It was like we had to take them something. Yeah, what was it? I forget it? what it was. It was some item, but it was something that they it, they were concerned about or they needed extra or maybe it was the, oh, it was the, um, I remember what it was. We were out of town and one of the systems that we use is Vivint, the security system, and the it has a motion sensor that runs off of a battery. It's not hardwired. And the battery had gone all the way down. That's right. And it was setting the alarm off. That's right. Which is really annoying if you're staying there and you want to set the alarm and the alarm keeps going off because the battery's dead on this thing, right? Yeah. And we were out of town. So that was a really good example of, hey, we we needed the runner because we had that person knows the system. We could say, here's where the battery is. Uh, in fact, we had made a training video on how to replace it. Yep. Always is, a really good idea. Which is a really good kind of side point. Like <laughs> you, you need to have training videos, but we had, we had a training video so we could send them that and say, here's is, here's how you change it. And then they went over there while the guest was there. So you need somebody that presents well as well Yep. and fix that problem for the guest. And we weren't even in town. Yep. We were in Miami. We were in Miami at the time. So uh, the runner is a very important position. Mm hmm. In our in our business, at least, anyway. Right, and it it's not really a necessarily a skilled position, but you definitely need to hire someone that you can trust and who is ethical and you know has good character. Yeah, and it could it you could have some skills that are that are really nice to have, like can you reset a modem? Yeah, that would be great. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Do you know how to deal with the Wi-Fi? Can you do some basic troubleshooting? Sometimes some like minor maintenance issues. Yeah, like, that's right. Um, um, you know, something is like the blinds are broken or something. You need somebody to there was something replace those. Too. Or what was it? We had a doorknob one a time doorknob, that was loose. It was loose. That's right. It so wasn't a huge had, idea mm-hmm. deal, but you need somebody that you know can use a, a screwdriver at least. Yeah, yep. it seems like a silly the, thing, but not everybody's handy. Yeah, you know. So if well, you have and a, we didn't have a screwdriver in the house. Well, so. there was that too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the guest may or maybe could have done it, but you know. but I'm just saying, have having somebody yeah. that has you know that's a little handy, that's maybe a little tech savvy, um, but they don't have to be a tech person right. or a handy man. You know that that's really a different job. But having somebody with some basic skills like that, or just having somebody that you can teach, you know that yeah, because the training videos are easy to do. I mean, yeah. we just put them in a, uh, what do we do? We put them on, um, we put them like on YouTube, YouTube and then we just make them unlisted. Uh-huh. So you can't, yep. what that means is you can't search for them, right? But you can send somebody a link and they can watch it. Right. Right. And so we have numerous of these that we've done about different systems in the business so that when an, I- when an item comes up like that, it's easy for us to just say, here's what the stuff is. Here's the video of how to do it. If you have any questions, ask me and then I don't have to, walk through it on the phone or or whatever you know right yeah we did that for pretty much everything that we have a lot of things like the, the security system dude, the security um, system the door the, the door, trash the locks the trash who did do it it's for s- silly things like for that yeah right for, but it's for everything we we've done we've done the training videos for just about everything that the runner does and on the for the cleaners we have checklists because we use turnover b and b 
Right. And Turnover B&B allows you to upload a checklist for each property. So, and they get paid through Turnover B&B and, you know. Right. And then our runners, we actually have them invoice us and we pay them. Right. What do you pay, Venmo? Venmo? Ven- we pay through Venmo, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. So that's how we handle that. Yeah. And another, a third um, important team member is the laundry service because we don't have the cleaners do the laundry in the unit. Right. And, and a lot of people do, though. And we started people, out doing we did. that. Uh-huh. We started out doing that. In the basement, of course. Yeah. Um, because you were doing it. And yeah. there's no laundry in the basement. It's in the house, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. But, uh, but then when we moved to originally... In our first couple of units, yeah. we were having them because there are washers and dryers in mm-hmm. those homes, and we were having the cleaners do it. Yep. And we found that that was not very scalable, even if you had backup cleaners, because it just it takes, it takes a long time so to wash laundry. Long. You know, it's an hour to do laundry. Yeah. By the time you dry it and all that. Yep. And so that's an, another hour they have to spend in there, and then mm-hmm. it was hard for them to do two of them yep. in a day, you know? Yep, exactly. And we also found that the, the basically the washers and dryers in the units didn't clean as well as say a commercial unit would at a laundromat. Yep. And so we took that job away from the cleaners. So we separated that out too. Yep. So what a lot of people do is use a cleaner for all three of those jobs. And we actually have three different team members that we use, and, and we utilize them with their special specialties. Yeah. Which matters. It does. It's nice. It's nice to have that divvied out like that, because each person can focus on their one task. Right. And you're paying appropriately. Again, yes. cleaning laundry is a $10 an hour job. Mm-hmm. You know, it's somebody standing at a laundry machine, putting laundry in and taking it out and folding it. Yep. You know, it's not a it's not a twenty six dollar an hour cleaning job, so don't use your twenty six dollar an hour people to do it. Use the cleaners, and they'll do a better job because that's what they do. Yep. They do linens. Yep. That's it. And I don't know how they fold those fitted sheets. Oh, like I know. That. It is freaking magic. We get stuff come back, and it's folded, and, and it's all and you can't tell the difference and, between no, what's what. You can't, which is kind of cool. <laughs> but they but they organize it for us by yep. size and all that kind right. of thing. Mm-hmm. But you know it's you know it's professionally clean. You know it's good, and so we utilize a. You're right. La- laundry service is one of our our big team. Members. It really is. Yeah. So what we do is I'm gonna I'm gonna let you inside of our business a little bit. Uh oh. Okay. But but what we do is we color coordinate linen bags. Yes. And we have these um, big linen bags that we get off of Amazon. And each for we color coordinate them for each property. So um, so that the runner knows and the laundry service knows which property um, goes with uh, what linens. Right. So like, for example, at Medford, you have orange bags. Exactly. Dubois, you have red. Exactly. I think. Mm -hmm. And then each property is a different color. And so when those bags go to the laundry, even if they all go at the same day, yep. what that also allows them to do is is break out our costs by property. Ooh, that's a really good point. Because we were not doing that at first. Mm, we were, right. you know, we had five units or something at that time, I forget. And all the laundry would go and all of it would come back, but you didn't really know. Yep. You know, how much of that $300 they charged you was for this property, this property, or this property. Yep, that's right. And then you kind of had to look and say, well, who stayed where? Right. <laughs> what properties were even occupied during that period? Right. But doing the color-coded thing, they, they can clean them and then charge us by, even though they're all on the same bill, yep. the slips we get back say three reds yep. at this price yep. or, you know, two oranges at this price. Yep. And that allowed that allowed us to then get a real handle on what we were really spending per property per reservation on linens on linens. Yep. So that we could appropriately charge. Yeah. Because and we now, weren't doing that before. Right. And now we can pass that expense along to the guests. It's right. Just a it's just a pass through expense, just like cleaning. Right. But if you don't have that mm-hmm. broken out, my point was before when we had the 
even we before we were doing the laundry yep, service, we, just, we had the cleaners doing it. Yep. Mm-hmm. We really had no idea how uh-uh. much it cost us. Nope. We had no idea. Because there was, I mean, technically there's electric, there's water, mm-hmm. right? There's yep. soap that we're using. Yep. There's the time for them to do it. How much of the time were they cleaning? Did they actually do linens? You know what I mean? Yep. And so it was really hard to break out costs. It was just kind of all rolled into the cleaning fee. Yep. And so we had no idea. And and we didn't realize how important that was until we actually broke it out and realized that, hey, we're not charging enough. Yep. We were not charging enough. We were actually losing money on cleaning and linens and didn't know it because we weren't breaking it out. So that was real important. I wonder how many people that's happening to and they're leaving money on the table and they don't even know why. Yep. Yeah. So that was a real benefit to have to adding that team member and breaking that out. Yeah. It was eye opening into a separate job. Yeah. So, so we've, so far we've got cleaners, backup cleaners, backup, backup cleaners, (laughs) runners and laundry service. And you know what? Another really important member of our team is our um, landlords, our property managers. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't consider, well, we do in our business model. We're renting, right? Right. So some people won't have a landlord. If you, if you own the property, you are the landlord. Right. Right. But even then, I would say, you know, those are really two separate businesses. I had this discussion today, actually, on Facebook. And I think a lot of, especially real estate people, can tend to conflate the two and, the, and, and put both of those businesses together and call it one thing. But really, they're separate businesses, whether you own the property or not. But you're right. Our, our landlords end up being... Um, partners yes they end up being partners it's much less of a landlord tenant relationship than it really is a partnership partnership. because we're doing a lot of things that are beneficial to them like managing the property uh, a a lot of the maintenance Mm -hmm. we're doing maintenance um even even maintenance that we're not responsible for a lot of times we're coordinating it yep like the HVAC goes out. Mm-hmm. Well, we've already had the conversation of, you know, who's the HVAC person. We'll go ahead and call them. We'll get them over there. We'll do all that. And even though we're not actually paying for that, cause it's HVAC or it's a roof, uh, at least we're, you know, on the spot and we're, we're actually partners with the landlord. Yeah. Don't glaze over that because that's really huge. What you just said the the way that we handled this was was really good and it's like a win-win situation for us and for the landlords too right sure because we actually go to the landlords and say hey do you have an hvac person this is for maintenance yeah right yeah so if they do then we know who to call. Yeah. We, so we we learned to establish that up front uh-huh. because we didn't at first. That's we didn't right. Know Until that, it that, happened. That, that should be a thing because we had that happen. Like, because, you know, in our business, we kind of have to have it fixed then. Yeah. And we had, some, and the story was we had somebody staying at one of our properties. It was summer. Yep. I forget. Was. It was hot. I can tell you that. It was mm-hmm. like June, July or something, which yep. is like 100 degrees here, 80 at night. Okay. They had an elderly person with them. Uh, I think that's part of the reason they were in town. And the air conditioning quit working. It's central air. And it's like 10 o'clock at night. And, well, they're calling us. Like, what what are you going to do? You know, and we're like, I don't know what we're going to do. I guess we're going to call an HVAC company. But we ended up spending the money ourselves because we needed to get it done for our gas. And Mm -hmm. And the landlord, it was 10 o'clock at night. I mean, they don't, mm-hmm. I think he was actually out of town or I something. I think so. And so we we kind of just had to go do it. And then we just kind of had to eat it because we we did something on our own that we didn't necessarily run by them. And so what we did after that point was to sit down and say, okay. And actually, it was their idea. It sure was. Which goes along with that idea of, hey, you're really partners in this. Yep. It was actually their idea to say, hey, let's sit down. I'll give you everybody that I use. And if you have an issue like that, you call Jim for this thing. Or you call, you know, Todd for this other thing. Or, you know, Lucy handles this. 
right? And so basically what we ended up with was a preferred vendors list. Yep. And then we knew, because they were going to call those people anyway. Exactly. So we could just make the call. They knew they were getting the pricing and and the and the quality and the person they wanted doing the work. And it just worked out very well. And then we just send the bill. We'll and just send them the bill. In yeah. fact, we paid for it and then just had them reimburse us, yep. right? Mm-hmm. Which was great. So that's a great partnership to have, yep. um, you know, so that you're working together because they want us as long-term tenants and they want us, they want the property kept up too. And we want to be there long-term and it's in our best interest to keep the property up too because sure. our business depends on them exactly, and their property being well-maintained just as much as their business depends on us being good renters and paying every month. So yep. there's, there's a lot of synergy there. And so uh, they, they've they been great partners and, and you really are partners in the business uh, in that way. Yep. And that's why we think of them as one of our team members. Yeah, we do. And so, we included them as team members yep, even sure because do. they just are. Because they're, they, yes. They're, they're part of your yep. business. Yep. They just are. It's just, uh, you know, uh, it's it's just like the cleaners, right? Your business depends on them and their business depends on you. Yes. So and it's mutually beneficial. It is. In mm-hmm. a lot of ways. In fact, they probably get the better end of it, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, I would think so because we're doing all the work. Because it's a lot more <laughs> passive if you're the landlord. <laughs> right. You know? I mean, really, the only time our landlords ever hear from us is if one of the four major things happens. Right. And then it's usually like, well, we fixed this. <laughs> right. And then we, we're like. Or we called, you know, we called. Uh, <laughs> right. Ben. Ben. Right. Who's the HVAC guy at one of our places. Right. Yeah. We called Ben. He came out. He says it's this. You know, what do you, what do you want us to do? Yep. Or, or and then they know Ben, so they can like call Ben and say, exactly. "Hey Ben," this, or they can say, "Just go ahead and do whatever." And you know, it's 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 a it's a beautiful thing. It really is. It really is, and that's why we put the landlords um, in as there, a team member, as yeah. a team member. Uh, let's see, <clears throat> a bookkeeper. Oh yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, it sure is because I hate doing the books. Oh God, I hate doing the books. That well, is you, like the best money that we have spent. It I really gotta is. tell you. But even even more than that, I mean, yeah, I hate doing it too. In fact, what happens is we just don't do it. Exactly. Like if it's I up don't to know us, what to do. And it's January. Oh. And we're like, all right, well, when's the last time we looked at QuickBooks? It's like six months ago. Well, it was July. <laughs> right? And then I don't know if I did it right. Right. Then you're just like Ch- putting everything in a category and do you have the receipts probably not <laughs> probably not or maybe they're in a big box over the over yonder <laughs> that's right over yonder over yonder <laughs> right so it's kind of like um not only for that reason just because if you and our book cooper's great oh man isn't she she's so wonderful I mean, she has this, basically, she's like, when you spend it, send it. Yep. When you spend it, send it. So all I have to do is take pictures of the receipts and email them to her. Yeah. You email them to her. You say, this is what it was for. And tell her what it was for. And they and organize all of it. And that's it. That's all I got to do. Yes. That's it. And how awesome is that? And it is awesome. That, that part is super awesome because I always know that. Uh, at least in this business, we're going to survive an audit. Yes. Because every sure. transaction in our uh, accounting system, the transaction itself has the receipt attached to it. Yep. So it's like super organized. If they come in and say, hey, what was this? You just pop it up and say, here's the receipt. It's right there. And so it's all accounted for. And the great, the other great thing about having a a bookkeeper not only just a bookkeeper in general but somebody that knows how to do the books for a short-term rental makes a huge difference it really does Uh, and our bookkeeper actually has a short-term rental right uh, and she does the books for a lot of short-term rental investors so she's very familiar with it and knows knows what numbers are important because one of the things i've learned about accounting is from doing it ourselves basically (laughs) Is that you can account for everything and have everything balanced, but it may not be useful information, right? Yeah. So part of your bookkeeper's job is to, you know, the difference between data and information. Yes. We've had this discussion yes. before. Uh-huh. So data is just like the numbers. 
information is organized numbers that give it meaning. And one of your bookkeeper's jobs is to give your raw data and your numbers meaning. And so what she does is actually presents us with things that we can use, like what are we exactly spending on linens, right? What what are it, are our exact expenses for each property? Yes, it's a beautiful thing when you actually know your numbers. How much does it cost us to acquire customers from a platform like Airbnb? Mm. How much are you spending on that? Ooh. I bet most people don't know. Ooh. I bet most people have no idea. I could go look and tell you right now. What did I what did I pay Airbnb as a platform to send me customers last month? And yes, that's an expense. Yep. It's a marketing expense. So if you're not tracking that and your bookkeeper's not tracking that or they don't know to track it, then you don't know you don't have that information, even though the data may actually be there. Yep. So things like that are important. Um, it, it allows us to, to know exactly how low we can price. Ooh, that is huge. I know what break even is. Now, a lot of people know this kind of in their head. Like they'll say, well, my rent's this or my mortgage is this, right? My utilities are about this, and I'm not sure what else they can tell you. And then they're like, well, that must be my expenses. Right. But I can tell you in our expense column, we have something like 20, 20 different items that we're tracking. Uh, there's, And it's by not just, hey, utilities in general, but it's like, you know, how much are we spending on pricing software per property? How much are we spending on uh, YouTube TV? Per property, how much are we spending on, you know, all the little things that that we utilize, you know, our, our pricing software, I think I mentioned, our, our calendar management software, our uh, messaging software, um, and not just in aggregate, but like per property. So I know, I know down to the property, not just as a business as a whole, how that property is doing. Like how much, how much do we spend on linens at Medford in November? Yep. I know that. Right, yeah. that type of information. Man, so that, that is just invaluable it's, information. It's, it's, it's advantageous because now I know how much I can, how little, really, how little I can charge and still break even or right. make money. Yeah, and that that's a number you have to know in this business, especially in a month like January, which we are in. <laughs> yes, yes. Because the sucks. word in January is "don't lose money." Right, that's exactly. January right. is is very 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 slow season for us here in in Charlotte. And knowing your numbers is so important and having that bookkeeper on your team is the only way you're going to know. Them. It's the only way. Cause I guarantee you, if you're, if you're doing it yourself, unless you've really put a lot of thought into it, you're missing something. Cause she came up with stuff. I was like, mm-hmm. I, I would have never thought to do that. Yep. You know, she's, so, she's dreaming. Yeah. I hear the dog, the, the dog. dog's yelping, but the she's dog. actually dreaming. She's dreaming. You ever wonder what dogs dream about? Like, I don't know. Are they look? She's running. Maybe she's thinking about her team members. <laughs> <laughs> Dogs don't have to have bookkeepers. We do everything for them. You know, uh, there's another very important um, team member, and so we've talked about cleaners. Yep, cleaners. Backups to backups to backups. A runner. Runners, um, property managers, and landlords. The linen company. Linen service. A uh, bookkeeper and another one is the insurance. Oh yeah, insurance. Mm-hmm. That that's a team member to have. And I just went through a training this week on that uh, from one of our mentors, and we were talking about insurance. And I was actually talking to somebody here locally about insurance, and they said, "Well, I use this company," and I was like, "We'll, we'll use this company." And the reason they used the other company is because they were cheaper, right? And you really need to have somebody that's on your team that understands short-term rental insurance and the type of coverages you need. Uh, somebody that can educate you on why you need this or might, why you might not need this other thing or, you know, what maybe what your limits should be on coverage. You know, maybe even the minimums aren't what you want. Like, for example, does the insurance that you are, that you have, and you do have insurance, right? Because Airbnb host insurance, in quotes, host guarantee is not really insurance. Okay, you just dropped like a huge nugget. Well, a lot of people probably don't realize that they need insurance because they're like, well, 
Airbnb is a million dollars. I'm like, no, it's not. What insurance company does Airbnb use? Can anybody tell me? Nope. And they won't tell you either. Probably because they probably because they self insure. Yeah. Right? I'm sure. But they're they're not really insurance. They're it, it's it's more of a thing to to sit there and make you feel good. And they will pay out on certain things, but it's not insurance. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um but that said, you need somebody that can explain the difference, for example, to you between um you know, if you if your TV breaks, if somebody breaks your TV, are you getting replacement cost or are you getting actual value? Ah, uh, yes. Meaning, it's a three year old TV. Are they going to pay you? Well, I bought it three years ago. It's no longer worth the five hundred dollars I paid for it. So we're going to pay you two hundred dollars for it. Well, I can't go buy a new TV for two. I don't need you know half of a TV. I need a whole TV. <laughs> so I need replacement cost, right? Yeah. Um. Is your insurance covering things like lost income? Uh, we had somebody that happened to them recently. Their their place got flooded. They had to cancel a bunch of reservations, but they had the proper insurance. And the insurance then paid for those lost reservations that they had to cancel. So that was lost business income. Uh, does your insurance cover bed bugs? That's the one that's missing from a lot of short-term rental insurance. You know insurance. what? That is really – a that was something that I really wanted to look at with our insurance. Does our insurance Ours cover? covers bed bugs. Okay. Yeah. I thought so. And you want it but to could, because it's, yeah. it's expensive to get oh, rid of bed bugs. Oh, man. Can you imagine? <gasps> but they will, is, they will cover it. So, you know, is, maybe your insurance is cheaper, but maybe they don't cover bed bugs. Right. Right. There, there are things, and I'm not an insurance professional. I'm just giving you things that I've been told uh, by people that are. But I know that these are things that are in my policy, and they're in there for a reason. Um, we're covering the contents at actual value or replacement value. Replacement value. We're covering. Uh, we're, we've got liability coverage. So, you know, somebody comes and slips and falls. They're, we're actually covered. Right. Um, you know, we've, we've got bed bug coverage. We've got lost income coverage. We've got um, we've got coverage for uh, regulations. So if Charlotte decides that, hey, we just don't allow Airbnb anymore, we have insurance for that. Nice. So, it, having having insurance person on your team is super important, and we learned that from our our real more. You know, real estate is real estate a word. <laughs> but when we were flipping houses and and doing that kind of thing, uh, one of our good friends actually is an insurance broker here in town, and having somebody in that case that was also a real estate investor and did flips and had rentals and knew the type of coverage and knew the inter- you know the insurance in and out and knew what you needed and had somebody that could advise you in that was invaluable. Yeah, it really was. You knew you knew you were covered. Mm-hmm. Um. And and you need that in this business too. First of all, you need insurance. Yeah. And second of all, Please you need somebody insurance. that understands what you need and can ex- and can explain all those things, mm-hmm. like what what you might need and what you might not, and can and look at policies and tell you what's in and what's not on, in them because they're hard to read. Yeah. If you ever read an insurance um, policy, you well. might not really know what you actually have. You know. <laughs> so yeah, insurance very important team. Yep. Very nice. Very nice. So those are our super important team members. Yeah. If you're not going to have any other team members, have those. Yeah, please. Yeah. And I would say, try not to combine them. So that would, that would be my other, you know, thing I would point out is try not to combine so many jobs into one team member. I think I mentioned that already, Mm -hmm. but I think that's just important to point out. Yep. Uh, The more you can split things out, the better cost effective you'll be. And the more covered you'll be because mm-hmm. you'll have people because literally if the cleaners couldn't come, like all the backups, our runner could clean in a pinch. Right. If we had to have somebody. Clean, That's true. Right? That's true. So little things like that. Yeah. Um, it, it's just it's better if you have more people and the more units you have, the easier that gets for sure. Yep. Well, our next venture into adding another team member will be a, a virtual assistant. Yes, because that's that's the other thing I was going to say is that in the beginning, you may be those team members, but you need to delegate. 
Well, um, you need to create a system. Yeah, you're right. Go do it. Of course I'm right. Because it, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to teach somebody some, to do something that you've never done. Well, that's why I went and cleaned first so I could clean, create the cleaning checklist. Right. But then find out all the other little things <clears throat> that needed to be on it that weren't just yep. cleaning, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. And then we were the runners for a while. Yep. We actually did the laundry for a while. Yep. When sure we, did. When we pulled that away from the cleaners, we didn't have a cleaning service. That's right. All of a sudden, we were doing a lot of laundry. Yep. I remember about this time last year, this time last year, I was doing all the laundry for three of our places. Yeah. And our water bill went like through the roof. Yeah, for sure. And after three months, I was like, I'm not doing this no more. Yeah. I don't think it was even three months. Uh, it was pretty close. It, it was a while though. It but was, we developed a system for yep. it and then it just mm-hmm. came easy. We yep. just dropped it right off. That's exactly right. And that was the end of it. Yep. Um, so that is important. It is important to first maybe do it yourself for a little while until you can come up with a system for it. Yes. And then now you know you can train that person. You can make a, a video, train that person, and and then pass it along. Right. And that's important to note that we're still evolving. Like there are things that we do in the business that we will eventually add team members for. Well, that's what what I was talking about. We're going to. Yeah, as you mentioned. But that. that's what we're doing right now is we are developing the systems. We know what we don't like to do. <laughs> right. So we're going to have a virtual assistant do it for us, but we have to first develop the systems, which we have. And yes. And that's currently what, what I'm doing is just following the, mm-hmm. I have a system, like yes. for example, for changing door codes, it's a very small task. Yeah, it is, but I have a system for it. It's easy. It just, so I just have to like actually flip the switch and so I need somebody to put somebody in the in the job to flip the switch. Yep, and that's what we're going to be doing next. That'll be our next team member. So, so stay tuned. Stay tuned. We'll have more team members. We'll have more team members next. So we hope you found some value, and all of this information comes from our book, Eighty Eight Secrets to Success for Your Short Term Rental Business, and it is available on Amazon wherever fine books are sold. And if you want to get into your first short-term rental, we did develop a course for that as well. Five steps to your first short-term rental. Yes. And uh, it's only $47 now. That's right. It's available at thecashflowcouple.com slash start. Start. Yep. Yep. So thecashflowcouple.com slash start and check that out. Yep. It's a good one. And well, I guess we'll talk to you next time. All right. right. Peace. Thanks for listening to another exciting episode of the Cash Flow Couple. If you found value in this episode, please subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen. We're on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, virtually anywhere you might find a podcast, whatever podcast player you're listening on now, hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. It helps other people find us. It helps us move up in the rankings. If you did not know, we also have a YouTube channel. It's The Cashflow Couple. All of our episodes go there. But as well, we also put other video content that is not part of the podcast. You can find us on Facebook at The Cashflow Couple. We go live there quite a bit. We share tips, tricks, things that are behind the scenes in our business that you may not see on the podcast. But it's definitely more of a real-time, day-to-day type experience. So definitely follow us on Facebook. If you want to ask us questions or if you have concerns or something you want to hear on the podcast, hit us up on by email, info at thecashflowcouple.com. We love to hear from our audience. We really care about you guys. Uh, we want to see you succeed, and we want to hear what you have to say. So hit us up, info at thecashflowcouple.com. So until next time, happy hosting, happy investing, and we'll see you on the next episode of The Cashflow Couple.